Hello, I'm here with Gwyn Williams, a consultant ophthalmologist who specialises in medical retina and uveitis. Hi Gwyn. Hello Amy. Uh, so Gwyn uh, undertook his fellowship in 2015 and 2016 at Moorfields doing medical retina. Uh, so we're going to find out a bit more about his fellowship. Uh, so why did you choose Moorfields? Well, Moorfields is the biggest eye hospital in Europe and has the greatest collection of medical retina experts in the United Kingdom all working together in one roof, uh, which uh, makes for an excellent environment to study medical retina. For It's a tertiary referral centre. You get the rarest and most peculiar cases that you could ever think of coming in. And perhaps, I would even go as far as saying, a year there is the equivalent of perhaps 50 years elsewhere insofar as the wide case mix that you see and the interesting cases. Uh, and the teaching environment is second to none. So that's why I chose uh, Moorfields. So what did you do to have to um, get the fellowship? Uh, well, uh, Moorfields advertises uh, in NHS jobs and in the BMJ. It's, uh, it recruits uh, up to about 15 to 20 medical retina fellows alone each year for yearly fellowship placements. So I knew many years in advance that I wanted to do that fellowship as many of my colleagues in the area where I work have likewise done fellowships and spoke highly of it. And I was on the constant lookout for the jobs, and when they did, I uh, emailed and went for the interview. And I was very happy that I was given the job there. Did you have to do any other groundwork for it? Um, well, it, it is a difficult interview in a way, and it is slightly different to an interview as a registrar in that they're looking for um, research and other uh, study based. Um, projects as they have a great research interest there and they always want uh, lots of people to help them with the projects that they have there so you have to say the right answers so i spoke with a few people who had previously done fellowships at moorfields and asked them what questions they were asked and uh, prepared likewise forewarned is forearmed so if somebody i was thinking about doing the same fellowship uh, do you remember what you were asked at your interview that would help them? Well, there were all the standard questions that everybody in any medical interview gets uh, asked about career progression, your plans, where do you see yourself and, and all that kind of thing. But I specifically remember the question being somewhat similar to an OSCE, uh, or the Viva part of the exam before the OSCE, where we were given pictures of an angiogram at various stages uh, of what turned out to be a proliferative diabetic uh, retinopathy patient with new vessels and uh, questions were asked about risk factors for progression treatments and, and various studies that would be applicable to that situation uh, and uh, with particular emphasis being made on uh, the risk factors uh, what they were getting at was that a large portion of the patients attending uh, Moorfields attend because of very aggressive disease and uh, that was the main part that I do remember, yes. Are there any other places in the UK you'd, or elsewhere that you'd recommend uh, for fellowships in medical retina? There are many places who do medical retina fellowships. In fact, medical retina is one of the fastest growing subspecialties within ophthalmology and there are many many places that do them bristol uh, manchester and birmingham are all excellent places uh, I, everybody has their own bias when they recommend such things so i shan't specifically recommend any particular location uh, apart from saying that all of those places have excellent medical retina programs uh, and uh, but obviously I chose London because in my mind I believed it's to have the best medical retina training programme. So can you tell us a bit more about what your typical week was like as a fellow? Well there was about uh, six hours of teaching incorporated into the weekly schedule so that was the greatest difference because quite apart from um, what I was used to which was a half a day of teaching um, which was an hour or two of actual teaching at most a week. There was teaching every single day. It in entailed getting there very early or leaving very late and sometimes both, but rarely none. 
and uh, the teaching schedule took place every single day. There wasn't a single day without teaching. The clinics as well were every single day. And of the week, there were two study periods that I had, and I went through a, a stage of having a theatre list uh, as well. Uh, although, uh, in actual fact, operating doing simple cataracts and more fields was so tough compared to regular circumstances, that in itself was also an education. Clinic, 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 otherwise, uveitis clinic, medical retina clinic, uh, injection clinic, um, genetics clinics, all a variety of uh, clinics, and one day a week in an outlying hospital. Okay. So what would you say were, if any, any downsides to what you, for that year you did your fellowship? Well, by far and away the greatest downside is the financial um, Armageddon that it causes regular people. They pay a wage which is better than it was in the old days where nobody was paid any wage. Uh, but the wage I was paid, which I believe is standard, was £40,000 a year before tax. Uh, London has one of the greatest uh, rental costs of any place in the country. And along with transport and paying a mortgage on a house uh, back home, uh, I, I lost tens of thousands of pounds for the privilege of doing that fellowship. But the advantages of But the advantages, oh yes, I knew this in, in advance and uh, I had planned my finances accordingly. But even then, I was always saddened to look at my monthly statements. So what would you say to somebody who's nearing the end of CCT and thinking about a fellowship, whether it's medical retina or in general? Well, a canny would have already thought about uh, what subspecialty they want to do and would have looked into fellowships and it's in vogue at the moment to go abroad. People go abroad so sometimes to New Zealand or to Australia or to Canada. The, go, simply going abroad isn't an aim in itself and I would counsel people not to do that. But what they should do is look for the actual fellowship programs that are being offered. America, for example, as in the United States of America, have ex excellent fellowship programs which are two years uh, in length, but they are not uh, paid at all. So it would take a considerable planning, but even still, uh, the spaces are filled up sometimes years in advance. Uh, but that would be a true a dream to do something such as that. So don't go abroad for the sake of going abroad. Look into what your colleagues that have passed through the subspecialty you want to specialise in before you, where they did their fellowships, what they recommend, and specific people that you want to work uh, with. Uh, some people will be constrained by geography, uh, and everyone will have their own point of compromise. Okay, great. Thanks, Gwyn, for talking to us about your fellowship no today. No problem at all. Um, we'll be seeing you soon again, talking to you about your first year as a consultant. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Um, most of the words for ophthalmology aren't even English. They are either Latin or uh, Greek. For example, the word for pupil is canoichelagad, which literally translates as um, a candle, and uh, glaucoma, which again is an interesting thing, as glass is blue in Welsh, and glaucoma apparently comes from the Greek glaucos, uh, meaning a blueness of the eye, which was thought to be due to cataract or corneal edema, nobody really knows. Uh, so glaucoma with a W, and uh, perhaps I'll end by saying that uh, cataract is spelt exactly the same. Great, thanks. <laughs>